Hey guys, welcome back to my skincare basic series. Last time we talked all about cleansers and today we're gonna be exploring the world of toners, essences, and astringents. In part one, we're gonna cover what are they and how do you pick the best one for you. In part two, we're gonna talk about how to apply them and how to incorporate them into your routine. And as always, I'm gonna leave you with some top tips of things that I really like to do in my own routine. If you haven't seen my last video and you're interested in learning more about cleansers, definitely check that out. So generally speaking, toners, essences, and astringents are applied after your cleansing step. They're lightweight, watery formulas designed to manage the situation at your skin's surface level. So that means balancing the pH and setting the stage for the next steps in your routine like serums and moisturizers. I'm gonna go into more about each one in a second, but you can really think of it high level as being on a spectrum from oil removing on one end to adding hydration on the other. Astringents are on the more intense end. They're designed to remove excess oil, while essences are on the other end. They're a little bit gentler and really meant to add hydration. Toners is where it gets a little bit confusing because they're kind of in the middle. They can be either oil removing or hydrating. Since astringents are made to remove excess oil, it's the best fit if you're acne prone or have oily skin. Astringents are usually alcohol based or made with witch hazel. Alcohol specifically can cause some problems, but it can actually be pretty beneficial because it's really good at cleaning the skin surface and removing bacteria, especially if you're acne prone. They can be drying though. It can make your skin feel really tight, irritated, and if you have sensitive skin, it can cause flare ups. If that sounds way too intense, try an astringent with witch hazel instead. Witch hazel is a natural astringent that is known to be gentler on the skin. Other natural astringents are apple cider vinegar, green tea, and tannin-rich ingredients. So the whole point of essences are they're ultra lightweight hydrators that quench the skin and really give you that dewy look. Unless you've been living under a rock, you've heard of the Korean 10-step method. Essences, aka lotions as they're also known in Korea, are a really key step in that routine. You can think of essences like the water in the Venetian canals. Sounds kind of weird, but just hear me out for a sec. Essences form the network of canals and other products are like gondolas. They can get to where they need to go because they can float on top of the water. But if there was a drought, the gondolas wouldn't be able to deliver those goods. So moisture basically plays this role in our skin to help ingredients navigate something called the hydrolipid barrier. And essences help keep the canals balanced with moisture, helping the ingredients make the passage through the top layer of the skin. So what you wanna look out for is a product that contains humectants or other really hydrating ingredients like hyaluronic acid, glycerin, or even algae. A lot of essences feature fermented ingredients like soybean or sake. Don't be afraid of them because they're packed with antioxidants. So toners used to get a really bad rap. Back in the day, they were basically astringents, but in the last few years, we've learned a lot about how the skin functions on a molecular level. Brands have really incorporated lots of different functions into their toners. It can help serums better penetrate into the skin, and most formulas are alcohol-free. But because they can do a lot of different things, it's kind of hard to know exactly what they do. They can be either oil-removing or hydrating, but in general, their main job is to restore the skin's pH level and to remove excess oil. Our skin is naturally acidic, but some cleansers can change the pH level, upsetting the skin's acid mantle. The acid mantle is basically a layer on top of the skin that protects you from viruses and bacteria and other nasty things that you don't really want in your body. We want to support the skin and not disrupt it. So the newer generation of toners really pack in those active ingredients. Hydrators like rose water, aloe, glycerin, and hyaluronic acid, while exfoliators like glycolics help to limit the production of sebum. Other ingredients to look out for, which I love, are vitamin C to even out the skin tone, and niacinamide and peptides for anti-aging. So now that we've gone through all of that, you can probably tell that brands don't always label them in the same way, and so the lines between them can get really blurred. A hydrating toner and an essence, for example, are pretty much the same thing. So what I'm trying to say is, don't worry too much about the categorization. You wanna choose what feels good and really works for you because skincare is so nuanced now. I think it's really great though because it really shows that skincare is having such a moment. 
and you can really choose what's perfect for you instead of having to settle. The good news is you can actually use more than one and I'll go into that a little bit more in part two. Let's go through how to pick which one is best for you. To do that, it really comes down to knowing what your skin type is. If you have really oily skin, first try a gentler, alcohol-free, witch hazel-based astringent or an alcohol-free oil control toner before going for a heavier duty alcohol-based one. Don't think that if it's not burning or stinging that it's not working. If you have combo skin, go for either a toner or an essence. Maybe you have both on hand like I do so you can treat different areas of your face differently. If you have sensitive skin and you want to go for a toner, I would say just try it out on a really small patch of your skin first or in incorporate it slowly into your routine either morning or night. Essences tend to be a little gentler but if you have sensitive skin, I would say just be careful before incorporating anything really that's new into your routine. If you have really dry skin, go for an essence and look out for humectants like hyaluronic acid and glycerin. I definitely think you should consider adding at least one to your routine because you get more bang for your buck if you're prepping your skin first and making sure your skin barrier is performing at an optimal level. Prices can usually be pretty reasonable, except when you're dealing with essences, especially with patented formulas and ingredients. I'm looking at you, SK2. So look for a high concentration of active ingredients for the best value. Okay, so I'm gonna take you guys into the bathroom with me, so I'm gonna show you how to apply your astringents, toners, and essences. So with a toner or astringent, you're removing residue, so you want to grab a pad. I actually like to grab two pads, and as you know from following along with my videos, you know I like the reusable ones made from bamboo because they're so much more eco-friendly. I pour a small amount of the toner or astringent on both pads and start at the middle of my forehead and glide outwards. Then I go to my nose and I again start in the middle, going around my nostrils and gliding outward. Then I go to my chin and then glide outward towards my ears from there. I really like to make sure that I focus on my hairline and around my nose because those are the areas where I tend to get pimples. If your toner or astringent is packaged as a mist, a spray, or a thicker gel, just apply it directly to clean skin and allow it to dry and sink in onto essences. With essences though, since you're adding more moisture instead of removing residue, you wanna pour the liquid into your hand and press it into the skin with your fingertips. Make sure your skin is drenched. Remember the Venetian canal example. Okay, so to get the best results, you'll need to think about the order and the frequency that you're applying it. The safest way to introduce any of the products into your routine is to use it either morning or night. And you wanna sandwich it between your cleanser and all of the products afterwards. Just beware, some toners and astringents can include ingredients that cause sunlight sensitivity like glycolic acid or benzyl peroxide. Products that include ingredients that cause some photosensitivity should be used at night. And in the morning, you definitely want to make sure that you're reaching for the sunscreen because you'll be needing that extra protection. If you're going to use an astringent, you can definitely overdo them. They can reduce the acid mantle and disrupt the skin's pH balance. They can also encourage your skin to actually overproduce oil to overcompensate. Just be careful to monitor how much you're using and how your skin is reacting. For this this reason, I wouldn't recommend both an exfoliating or oil removing toner and an astringent because it's going to be way too harsh. Pick one or the other. An essence can be used morning or night after cleansing to prep your skin. You pretty much can't overuse an essence. In Korean skincare, you use both a toner and an essence after a double cleanse. Toners prep or refresh the skin before the first hydrating step, which is the essence. Let me know if you wanna see me cover the 10-step Korean method in another video. Now you know what they are and what the differences are, how to apply and how to incorporate them into your routine, it's time for my top tips. So what I really like to do is I like to grab some cotton pads, soak them with essence and put them on my face, leave them there for 10 minutes and it's like a really quick and easy DIY mask. 
So I don't really like the packaging that astringents, toners, and essences come in because if you're really clumsy like me, it's so easy to dump out way too much water and it spills all over your sink and you feel bad for wasting the product too. So what I like to do is buy a mister bottle. It's so much easier and it really prevents having to clean up a huge mess afterwards. If you've seen my cleanser video, you'll know about this already, but reusable cotton pads are so much more eco-friendly and they're honestly so cheap. There's no reason why you shouldn't be using them. Okay, so there's something called the seven skin method. In order to do the seven skin method, you're gonna apply three to seven layers of your favorite hydrating toner or essence right after cleansing your face. I know, I can hear you already. Why would I wanna apply seven layers onto my face? So the theory is if you apply all of these extra layers of essence, your skin gets really hydrated and dewy, plump, and you get that really nice kind of dumpling or glass skin effect. If you've got dry skin, you can really load on that hydration and just throw a quick oil on top. And if you've got oily skin, you can most likely skip out on the moisturizer afterwards completely. So your skin is dewy, glassy, and plump without the need of a super heavy moisturizer. Okay, and that's it. Thank you so much for sticking with me to the end. This was a really hard video to cover because as you can tell, the lines between astringents, essences, and toners get really blurred, but I tried to explain it as best as I could, so hopefully you learned something and it wasn't too boring. Also, feel free to let me know if there's anything I missed that you would love to see me cover in another video. If you wanna binge, click through to the next video of my series where I'll be covering everything there is to know about serums. Don't forget to like and subscribe and see you next time.